So in today's video, we're going to be overclocking the Bitaxe Gamma Turbo that you see here. So we're going to be doing a full overclock test on this. The only thing that we actually need to change firstly is the power supply. So this is currently running off a 12 volt system and we need a bigger power supply to start overclocking it because the one that we're currently using is at around 60 watts is the maximum and this pulls around 40 on the default overclocks. However, we do have a power supply which uses the same connector and that is from the Zyber 8 that you see there. So we're going to be hooking up that power supply. It should work because it's 12 volts as well, same connector, and then we can actually start overclocking. As I said, there is going to be a link to the landing page for this in the description if you want to go sign up and get notified when the Bitaxe Gamma Turbo actually releases. We did do a previous video where we changed out the thermal paste. I don't think it's really going to make a difference, but when it comes to overclocking, we're going to be using the benchmarking tool and we're just going to incrementally increase the overclocks as time goes on. And then we'll see how efficient we can get it and the max hash rate. We also have to be careful of the cooling just because we could overdo it and this is only a prototype. So we're not going to push it too far. We're just going to get it to a point where we can see maybe three, 3.5 terahash possibly. If there's two chips under there and they can both do around 1.7 terahash, then that could get us up to three terahash and possibly even further past that. So we're gonna change out the power supply, get it up and running, and then we'll head over to the computer to actually start overclocking on the benchmarking tool that we have. So we're gonna start from the low overclock, see what efficiency we can get and then go for higher overclocks for the hash rate. I don't think it's going to be particularly too efficient. As you can see in there, the efficiency isn't really great regardless. You would think it would kind of be around the efficiency of the bitax gamma, but currently I think due to the prototyping and the fact that there's two chips, the efficiency is dropping slightly off and maybe it's the power supply as well. So let's hook it up to the Zyber 8 power supply, which is I think 160 watts maximum. So a load of headroom to run with, and hopefully that doesn't actually burn out the power supply because I think if we ran it with this power supply overclocking, it would burn out at some point because there's not really much room between 40 and 60 watts that it's currently running at. So let's plug that in and head over to the computer and start overclocking. So this right here is the BitAxe Gamma Turbo dashboard, and we're currently looking at an average of around 2.13 terahash. So these are on the default settings. The power is 41.7, ASIC temperature 60, and voltage regulator 65. Input voltage is slightly higher, so 12.2, which is probably due to the power supply. It's not running at, it's not used to running at these lower watts. So it's probably countering for that, but when we start increasing the watts, that might actually change. ASIC frequency 525 and measured voltage 1.13. Got it hooked up to our own Umbrel local node, and I'll leave a link in the description for that as well if you wanna check out how to build your own node. And I'll also leave a link in the description to this video, which is a video on how to set up the Bitax hash rate benchmarking tool, which we'll be using today. It's basically a tool that allows you to go up in increments, which we'll show you now. So it's kind of a, so it's a Python script that you just go up in 20 voltage increments, and then 25 increments on the frequency. You have a benchmark time of 10 minutes, so 600 seconds. Sample interval is every 15 seconds, which means it'll reload. And then you can set your max temperature, allowed voltage and frequency, max VR temperature, minimum input voltage, and maximum power. So we do need to change this to 11,000 or somewhere around that because we don't want it falling below that minimum input voltage. And then we also need to increase this to probably 12,500 as the maximum allowed input voltage because we're working on a 12 volt system and not a five volt system anymore. Max power, we're gonna stick at 75. Max VR, we'll stick it at 82. And then max temp is gonna be 67. So whenever it starts to run away from the allowed temperature, that's when it's going to cut it off. So it's a simple Python script that just does all of that for you. And from here, you can change all of these if you want to go up in increments of one or two or three, four or five. You're allowed to do that by here. 
Um, all you need to do is edit this. So click save and it should update to the file that you're currently in, which is going to be bitax hash rate benchmark. And obviously in this video, it will show you how to actually get it up and running. But today, if you watch the video, we're just going to start by running it on a command line window. You can also run it on PowerShell if you really want to. So we'll show you that now. So we just open Windows PowerShell, run it as an administrator. And all we have to do is CD into the bitx hash rate benchmark name by here. So copy this and paste that there. So that's going to take us into the folder. And then we just run it based off of this script here. So Python bitx hash rate benchmark dot pi. And now all we need to do is input the IP address of your bitx. So it's going to be whatever the IP address is up here. So we can copy this and paste that there. So we're going to have to take out that, come back here and take out all of this. Make sure that there's a space between these. Come here and take it all the way to the end. And now we can actually set a start in core voltage and a start in frequency. So all you have to do is to start that is go is write a dash F is the frequency. So frequency of let's just start it out at 450 and then core voltage is a dash V and we'll start the core voltage at 1100. Once we click enter, it's going to read this IP address for your local machine and then it's going to start up the overclocking. So we click enter here and we can kind of see this on the dashboard. It should change now to 450 and then 1.13. So it's applying the settings and that was it changing right there. Now all we have to do is let that run for 10 minute intervals and it's going to go up in the AC frequency and core voltage. And we can see our top five averages and our top five hash rates that we actually get from this. So let's let that run and we'll see what hash rates we get and what efficiencies we get with what overclocks, with all overclocks tested. So after letting this run for probably around five to six hours overall, we have finally got our results. So we had, or we have a steady hash rate right there at 3.12, but I think that that's going to be dropping down very soon and an efficiency of 14.64. At the end of this test that we actually did, if we just put it full screen here, you can see that the hash rate actually started to slow down because the voltage increments weren't increasing. And I think it's something to do with the expected number by here. It's not updating to give an expected number. So it didn't actually give us the best overclock in terms of the hash rate. It didn't keep increasing the actual voltage. It only kept increasing the frequency as time went on. So it actually got worse because of this expected number. It's supposed to be taking it from the XOS, but I believe that this is because it's on the gamma turbo, there's probably some things around it that they don't have expected figures that feed through. But we have got our highest hash rate settings right here. So I was expecting more in terms of three terahash, but we only got up to 2,838 on average. And that was with a core voltage of 1100, so 1100, and a frequency of 675. So pretty good, and the efficiency was only 16.06 .06 joules per terahash on average. So I wouldn't say that this is a full overclocking video, but we've done at least some of the overclocking for it, at least at this core voltage. As I said, because it's a prototype, there's probably some problems within trying to benchmark it that haven't been worked out quite yet. But we also have higher hash rates as we go down. We're kind of sitting in the 2700 range on average. And then our best efficiency that we actually got it down to was at 1100 and frequency of 625. And that was pretty much nearly the same in terms of the terahash to the highest overclock. And the efficiency was 15.65. So that's kind of the expected efficiency that you would see from something like a bit X gamma on default settings. As you can see, the efficiency kind of did drop off. The rank five was 17.26. And I think that that was out of maybe, if we look here, that's probably around 15 to 20 
benchmarks that it actually tested. And also the input voltage actually didn't even come down to 12. So 12 volts, basically. The VR temperature ended up at 74, which is kind of fine. And the chip temperature started to creep up past that 60 range, which also probably wasn't that good. And it's probably because we were just pushing the frequency and the core voltage was not keeping up. So I'll have to do some editing on the expected values, maybe run it a little bit more. And then we can get way better overclocks for it. This was kind of just a test video. I don't really want to push it too far just because it is a prototype. We don't want to burn it out. As you can see on those last ones, the efficiency 26.92. And then on the final one, I don't even think it saved an efficiency down here. But even by here is 25.83, which is really bad efficiency. It has set the overclocks to 675 at 110. So after you do this and run it, it actually sets the overclock of the best result that you got. So it has set it to here and it looks like the hash rate is actually doing okay. So 2.82, it's actually higher than expected, but expected is 2.75 and efficiency is 16.59, which is nearly the same. And you can see the drop off in the chip temperature there whilst it was kind of steadying out. The fan speed is good. I think the overclocks can be pushed way, way higher, I believe. If we have a fully functioning board, I'd probably say that you could push this to at least four terahash. So I think at least we should look at trying to improve in terms of the overclocking uh, down at the ASIC measured voltage. I know we can definitely push it higher up into that four terahash range or even three terahash steady range. That's only 1.5 terahash per chip. We have taken the bit axe gamma to two terahash steadily. So we know that these chips can achieve that two terahash range. That means at the top level of overclocking, you're probably looking at four in the full range terahash for overclocking the bit X gamma turbo. And that would also probably require a back fan for the voltage regulator as well. But that will come in a different video. And we also looked at heat sinks. So there might be a heat sink upgrade coming in very soon for that, which can allow us to push the overclocks a little bit further. One thing I want to note as well, these voltage regulators held up really well when compared to the old bit axe gamma models. So they used to have really bad voltage regulators. I don't know whether they've actually switched the parts or it might be because of power mining, but it seems like over time the voltage regulator temperatures have been more in line with the ASIC chip temperature. The last overclocking video we did for the bit axe gamma, I believe that the chip temperature got up to 60 degrees and the voltage regulator got to around 79 degrees, which was not very good, but these were in pretty good ranges, especially for a prototype. And one thing I did want to mention but on our Bitcoin node, there is an app on Umbrel, which lets us actually monitor our bit axes. So we could do like an overclocking and track some of this. So if you don't know, this is our Bitcoin mining local node running on public pool. There will be a link in the description on how to set that up if you want to run your own node. But there is also an app on Umbrel for minor dashboard for Bitax Sentry, which is like a minor dashboard, kind of like a swarm that you would see on the Bitax by here. But I think it actually saves the data for you. So it saves hash rate over time. So you don't have to constantly look at this dashboard. And it also allows you to monitor it for minimum temperature. So we'll probably look into that in another video. But right now that's kind of our overclocking video done. As I said, there's way more to push on this. We can get it up to four terahash easily, but I don't really want to push until the full release is out in case we burn this one out because I don't want to burn out a prototype when we could make more videos around it in the future and make sure that you guys can find the best overclocks. Remember, it is chip dependent as well. So if you don't kind of hit the silicon lottery, then there's not really much you can do about that either. But if you want to sign up to get notified when these do release, check the link in the description. You can also get 10% off power mining if you use the link in the description for the Nerd QX, BitX Gamma. Make sure you like the video, subscribe for more content like this, and you can drop some comments on what overclocks you think would work best for the Gamma Turbo.